on the basis of some documents the rules and regulations of that state they have to be furnished and the judgment will be given on that basis so full faith and credit means a full faith and credit should be given to the judgment of the courts in any part of the country isse kya hota hai cooperation hoga the judiciary okay we will be obeying your orders yes this state will obey the order of the court of the other states also a type of cooperation will be developed then delegation of the executive powers under article 258 and 258a and 258 and 258a under article 258 and 258a the president and the governors i repeat under article 258 and 258a the president and the governors can delegate their executive powers to each other can delegate their executive powers to each other with mutual consent with mutual consent ye ho gaya so through this what we say is that uh, through this provisions of the constitution we can achieve the aim of cooperative federalism there are some bodies some agencies which have not been mentioned in the constitution but they also are a way to achieve the aim of cooperative federalism first of all we have the zonal councils zonal councils as the name suggests zonal councils they are situated in the zones north south east west central north east and uh, this concept of zonal council it is a brain child of the first prime minister of india pandit nehru <coughs> when the parliament was discussing the states reorganization bill way back in 1956 at that point of time pandit nehru floated the idea of having the zonal councils that let us have some zonal councils to solve the disputes or the common problems that may arise at the local level the southern states may face common type of problems the northern states can face common type of problems the states which are there in the eastern part they can face a common type of problem so let the problems be decided by them and if there is some dispute at that level they can look into the disputes they can solve the disputes themselves so with this idea the zonal councils came into being initially there were five zonal councils now we have got six zonal councils let me listen 
it was it was during the discussion it was during discussion on the states reorganization bill that the then prime minister the then prime minister pandit nehru gave the idea of having zonal councils of having zonal councils the states reorganization act 1956 the states reorganization act 1956 provided for five zonal councils provided for five zonal councils north south <coughs> sorry east west and central in 1971 the north east zonal council the north east zonal council was established now coming to the composition of the zonal councils composition of the zonal councils the union home minister the union home minister is the ex officio chairman is the ex officio chairman of all the zonal councils ex officio chairman of all the zonal councils yahi question poochte hain exam mein wo log theek hai that uh, who is the head of the zonal council the answer will be the union home minister it is an ex officio post anyone who will be the home minister will be the chairman of all the zonal councils next it consists of it consists of the cms of cms of the member states next it also consists of the lgs or administrators the lgs or administrators of the member states sorry of the member uts of the member uts next the chief secretaries the chief secretaries of the member states the chief secretaries of the member states are also the members of the zonal council so you need to remember two things here two important things here one 
is the union home minister being the ex-official head of all the zonal councils and then even the chief secretaries of the state they are the members of the zonal council so which of the following are the members of the zonal councils the chief secretary will also be a correct option here now coming to the functions it solves the it solves the interstate disputes interstate disputes that may arise that may arise between the member states between the member states and secondly it deliberates on the common issues it deliberates on the common issues of the zone of the zone now earlier before this government came we used to discuss the ndc also that is the national development council as an agency of cooperative federalism but now <coughs> i feel that simply it will be a wastage of time to discuss the ndc because we don't know the future of ndc today the ndc it was created by a cabinet resolution in 1952 on the recommendation of the planning commission i am telling you why it is not relevant to study it now so it was on the advice of or the recommendation of the planning commission that the ndc was created way back in 1952 by a cabinet resolution and it had to act as an advisory body to the planning commission now what we see that the planning commission is no more we have got another body that is the niti ayog and one of the structure of the niti ayog is that it is silent on the ndc because earlier after the five year plans were made by the planning commission the draft five year plan it was approved by the cabinet and then the approval of the ndc was required it consisted of the pm as the head the cms of all the states members of the planning commission the lgs or administrators of all the union territories a broad body but now what will be the future of the ndc obviously it is not very sure the major we can say the breakthrough has not been made even the niti ayog has met two twice or thrice as per the news that we hear and three or four months earlier even the person who is who has been appointed as the deputy chairman of this niti ayog he was not aware about his functions and a critical article had appeared in this in one of the newspapers but i had when i was going through that area i saw a big building earlier it was known as yojana bhavan now the nit, the name has been changed it is the office of the niti ayog clear a big they have changed it so basically but the future of ndc is not clear now what the government has done it has formed a sub committee of the niti ayog which consists of the chief ministers so if a sub committee has been constituted then i fear that what will be the role of the ndc 
but officially it has not been made defunct but let us see what happens but it will be a useless thing to discuss the ndc and they will not be asking in the examination also we have another agency that is ugc university grants commission it was created by the parliament there is a ugc act of 1956 created by the ugc act of 1956 it provides it provides financial assistance financial assistance to the indian universities it also prescribes it also prescribes <coughs> common teaching standards common teaching standards to be followed in the indian universities students ko bhi financial assistance dete hai in the form of junior research fellowship senior research fellowship मेरे ऐसे गरीब बच्चों से पढ़ के लेके पढ़ गए आगे सो इट गिव्स फेलोशिप आल्सो टू द स्टूडेंट्स और फॉर द रिसर्च पर्पज फॉर डूइंग एम फेल पी एच डी दैट इज डन थ्रू अ एंट्रेंस टेस्ट दैट वी कॉल इट एज द एन ई टी सो बेसिकली व्हेन यू सी द स्टैंडर्ड इट इज देयर फॉर ऑल द स्टेट्स इट सो इट इज एट इट एक्ट एज वी कैन से एंड आफ्टर दैट नाउ अड एज Uh, we have seen that in from the last academic session what the ugc has done ugc has brought a new scheme of education that is the cbcs uh, to be followed in all the central universities yeah usse bhi ek ho gaya ki ek central university ka student even in second year of his graduation he can come to or he can take admission in any of the central universities that is we can say he can transfer because everywhere the same type of courses will be taught in the central universities so a type of guideline so that a cooperation will develop such type of things are there so these are the agencies of cooperative federalism now coming to our concluding remarks on the federalism abhi tak jo humne discuss kiya hai uska concluding remarks likh lijiye India started its journey India started its journey through sorry journey by adopting by adopting a centralized development model centralized development model of federalism gradually with the emergence of the regional political parties we saw or we observed the beginning of bargaining federalism bargaining federalism
the state governments in many of the states are led by the regional political parties which are not strong only at the state level but also have a say in the national politics we have seen the emergence of the emergence of informal groups of chief ministers informal group of chief ministers apart from this development in the political sphere political sphere it has been observed it has been observed that new challenges like naxalism terrorism are emerging which needs the interstate cooperation that is sharing of intelligence sharing of intelligence etc in the present condition cooperative federalism is the need of the hour cooperative federalism is the need of the hour we may agree with the punchi commission we may agree with the punchi commission which held that which held that cooperative federalism is necessary to maintain the unity and integrity of the country to maintain the unity and integrity of the country and also 
for the socio economic development and also for the socio economic development of the country so still we cannot say that we are living in a one party dominant system we cannot say it some people just after the bjp came to power at the center that two with a majority basically they started saying that gone are the days of the regional political parties but we should remember one thing that it is just a one time phenomena and it is just one election that we have seen now and even after the general elections we had seen that it is not the revival of the one party system in this country the results in the delhi assembly clearly showed that the regional political parties are still stronger because at the local level the regional aspirations matter and in many of the states we have seen that the regional political parties are still very strong for example you talk about the southern states like andhra pradesh we have the telugu desham party we have the trs then in tamil nadu we have the dmk and aia dmk then in many of the other states the regional political parties are there and their voice matters so it is too early to say that we are living in an era or we have started we have come back to the era of one party system or one party dominant system because it is a phenomena it is a phenomena so until and unless the next general election takes place and we have the elections in many of the we can say the states we cannot say that we are still in a one party so the chances of bargaining for example you say the shiv sena is creating problem for the political party now that is the in, in power even though it is an ally so we can have such type of problems it is all about bargaining dr manmohan saying you we can say he faced such type of challenges he, the government was not able to make a good policy we were not able to sign the tista river agreement when mamta was supporting the congress that is the upa government so such type of practical problems then you say that some of the chief ministers they combined together and p a sangma became the presidential candidate it was because of these political parties only that is what we have said informal groups so such type of things can again happen in this country so then when we talk about the problem of internal security obviously there has been felt a need of sharing the intelligence among the states if they will be fighting among themselves hum nahi batayenge wahan pe kya ho raha hai are then obviously it will not be good for the health of the country so such type of sharing of intelligence is needed for that you need to have cooperation among the states so cooperative federalism is the need of the hour bargaining federalism obviously it it is there but what we need is cooperative federalism these were the aspects that we needed to discuss under the center state relations or indian federalism now let us move on to the next topic that is the emergency provisions you can use my power i will use you your power it will be by mutual consent any power that the union executive has it can ask the governor ki okay in the states you will use it will not be using it emergency provisions 